In the last lesson, we explored what a blockchain is and how it operates. You may remember that a blockchain network is essentially a network powered by computers referred to as nodes. We will now go into more depth and explain the role of these nodes and the incentives behind enduring the heavy costs and electrical consumption to maintain a blockchain. In this lesson, we'll focus specifically on the Bitcoin blockchain and the process of mining. In the blockchain lesson, we discussed that the processing and verification of each block and transaction is distributed across the network for each node to handle. In the specific case of the Bitcoin blockchain, these nodes are also known as miners. There are two main types of mining, known as proof of work and proof of stake. In the case of the Bitcoin blockchain, the system operates on the proof of work model. A proof of work system is a system where finding a solution to a given problem is difficult or expensive, but verifying the solution to the given problem is usually rewarding and justifies enduring the complexities of solving the problem. We will cover more on the differences between proof of work and proof of stake systems in a future lesson. Therefore, before a node, or in this case miner, can update their verification of transactions within a block, they will have to provide the proof of completion for a specific challenge. The challenge itself is very costly and time consuming to complete, but it's also easily verifiable by the network to ensure everything is authenticated and legitimate. This is where the term proof of work derives from. The challenge being the work that one must do and complete, with the proof then being the result that is verified by the network. The challenge is a mathematical puzzle that requires a lot of computational power to solve. You can almost compare this to a video game, where as time progresses and as each level is passed, the difficulty of the challenge also increases. As the Bitcoin network grows in users and power consumption, the difficulty of the mathematical puzzles increase, meaning more computational power is required to resolve the complex puzzles in an efficient manner. The result of completion for the proof of work model is the mathematical puzzle called the hash, something we touched on in the blockchain lesson. You may be wondering what the point of this is. Why would solving complex puzzles be beneficial? Some of the main reasons for this is the security of the network. The sheer effort, cost and computational power required to solve these puzzles means the network is not easily manipulated or attacked. Whilst it doesn't necessarily diminish the risk of fatal attacks entirely, it does make an attack on the network pretty pointless, due to the huge costs affiliated with attempting to take down the network. It also provides the benefit of not being manipulated by wealthy individuals holding large amounts of Bitcoin, meaning they have to actually put the work and effort in to maintain the network. With so much effort and cost being dedicated to network maintenance, the incentive to cause harm to the network is outweighed by the effort to maintain it. This is essentially the process behind how new blocks are formed. If the miner, aka the node, manages to solve the puzzle, the new block is formed. The transactions are placed within this block and then verified by the network to finalize the confirmation and move on to validating the next block. Whilst this all sounds sensible to maintain a network, you may also be wondering what the actual gain is for a miner to endure such a tedious process. Considering that such high-powered computers are needed to be operating at once to resolve these complex issues that a regular desktop or laptop cannot handle, what is the point of setting up warehouse-sized units full of computers solving challenges? The answer to that would be Bitcoin. Once the complex puzzles have been solved and a new block of transactions are added to the blockchain, Bitcoin is produced as a result. This is where the term mining comes from as it's no different to the process of mining or extracting gold. There's a set amount of Bitcoin rewarded for each mined block. This is known as the block reward. Every 210,000 blocks, which equates to approximately four years, the block reward is halved. In 2009, 50 Bitcoins were awarded per block. In 2012, this number was halved to 25, halving again in 2016 to 12.5. And in the present year of 2020, this number now lies at 6.25 Bitcoin rewarded per mined block. Miners endure this process because despite the reward halving on average every four years, they believe with the limited supply of Bitcoin, the price will organically grow to reflect this, which will not only create the potential for masses of wealth creation as the cryptocurrency market grows to a wider mainstream audience, but also very simply because it justifies the large costs of running hundreds to thousands of computers at once. 
It's important to note that whilst we have covered the positives, there are many negatives that most people refuse to discuss or accept as a reality. One of the biggest flaws and controversial topics is that due to the huge expenditure required to maintain the Bitcoin network, it has only become available to a select few who are capable of managing the upkeep of these incredibly large costs. The average person can no longer mine Bitcoin as they once could in the early days of Bitcoin's inception. In theory, despite what many vouch as the Bitcoin blockchain being a decentralized and secure network, the reality is quite the opposite. Many would actually consider the Bitcoin blockchain to be centralized. The biggest flaw of the proof of work model is the vulnerability to become a victim of a 51% attack. This is a matter where a user or group of entities gain control of the majority of the mining power giving them enough power to manipulate the network and monopolize from the block rewards by using their significant power to ensure other miners are not capable of completing blocks. To add to this focus of power, anyone in possession of this 51% power can also reverse transactions on the blockchain, essentially defeating the entire objective and security that was once intended of the Bitcoin infrastructure. So is this the case now? Yes, in fact, just four mining pools alone at this present day control more than 50% of Bitcoin's hash rate, which in itself shows just how centralized the network has become. As the mining reward progressively lowers as the years go on, the more power shifts into the hands of those who can continue affording to maintain the costs of handling the increasing complexity of challenges faced within mining new blocks. We will dedicate another video specifically on this topic. In the meantime, do the research yourself, your findings may shock you.